This week in Michigan football history with Professor Greg Dooley. This week we start off with a salute to a modern U of M legend born on this day in 1976. Happy birthday, Charles Woodson, Michigan's third Heisman winner and still the only defensive player to take home the coveted prize. But oh yes, today we face off with the Gophers for a tangible piece of college football history, the Little Brown Jug. You have to go way back to 1903 to find the roots for this classic college football tradition. Most fans know the basic story. Before the 1903 game between the two schools in Minneapolis, Fielding Yost dispatched U of M equipment manager Tommy Roberts to purchase a five gallon water jug, which cost 30 cents. After the brutally fought game of undefeated teams ended in a 6 6 tie, Minnesota found the jug and decided to keep it as a souvenir. When the Wolverines returned to Minnesota in 1909, the teams agreed that the winner should take home the jug, and the victor of the game has retained the precious crock ever since. That part of the story is pretty well established, but outside of that, there are still many misconceptions and myths about the history of the jug and the rivalry that persists today. For starters, you'll commonly hear that Minnesota actually stole the jug from Michigan in 1903. The reality is the Wolverines simply left the jug in the locker room after the game because, well, it was a 30-cent water jug and a pain in the butt to lug home. Common lore also suggests that U of M bought the jug because they feared Minnesota would try to taint or poison Michigan's water supply. This is also a myth. While the rivalry was real, the notion that the Gophers would poison us, well, just doesn't hold water. And another myth suggests that Fielding H. Yost, when he found out he left the jug, wrote Minnesota or wired them after the game. It's demanding the jug be returned. Yost was promptly told he'd have to win it back. Also not true. The team simply decided it would be cool to play for the jug when they met again in 1909. Sorry. The biggest question out there remains, and it is still a question, has that original jug from 1903 survived all these years? Given we're talking about a fragile piece of pottery and that it has been toted back and forth between the schools dozens of times, it would be very possible that the jug broke and hasn't made it back in one piece. But having done some CSI-style analysis of the crock, I have good news. There's a lot of evidence and a very good chance that the jug has indeed survived all these years. And if not, it at least dates to the 1920s. So either way, let's protect the jug. Remember, it's ours. We bought it. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that makes it property of the Michigan Athletic Department. Go Blue! Beat the Gophers. And for more, check out WTK.com and MVictors.com. For the Key Bank Countdown to kick off, this is the professor, Greg Dooley.